ಬಂದೇಹಂ so everybody can hear me and everybody can see my screen all right good thank you then i can start yeta mam prapadyante tam sateva bajami aham mam vatmanu vartante manushya pata sarvashah sananam ye all who yeta as ma mom on to me prapadyante surrender tam dam tata so ever suddenly bajami remote aham i mama my vatmana path manu vartante follow manushya all men path of santi o son of pita sarvashah in all respects as all surrender unto me i reward them accordingly everyone follows my path in all respects o son of pita purport by divine grace shri bhakti vedant swami shri prabhupad everyone is searching for krishna in different aspects of his manifestation krishna the supreme personality of godhead is partially realized in the impersonal brahma jyoti fulgen and as the all pervading super soul dwelling within everything including the particles of atoms but krishna is fully realized only by his pure devotees consequently krishna is the object of everyone's realization and thus everyone and anyone is satisfied according to one desire to have him and the transcendental world also krishna reciprocates with his pure devotees and the transcendental attitude just as the devotee wants him one devotee may want krishna as a supreme master another as his personal friend another as son and still another as his lover krishna rewards all devotees equally according to their different intensities of love for him in the material world the same reciprocation of feelings are there and they are equally exchanged by the lord with different types of worshipers the pure devotee both here and the transcendental abode associate with him in person and are able to render personal service to the lord and thus derive transcendental bliss in his loving service as for those who are impersonalists who want to commit spiritual suicide by annihilating the individual existence of the living entity krishna helps also by absorbing them into his effulgence such impersonalists do not agree to accept the eternal blissful personality of godhead consequently they cannot relish the bliss of transcendental personal service to the lord having extinguished their individuality some of them who are not firmly situated in the impersonal existence return to this material field to exhibit the dormant desires for activities they are not admitted in the spiritual planets but they are again given a chance to act in the material planet for those who are fruity workers the lord awards the desired result of the prescribed duties as the yagyeshwara and those who are yogis seeking mystic powers are awarded such powers in other words everyone is dependent for success upon his mercy alone and all kinds of spiritual processes are but different degrees of success on the same path unless therefore one comes to the highest perfection of krishna consciousness all attempts remain imperfect as stated in the shrimad bhagavatam 2310 sarva kama a kama sarva kama va moksha kama udaradi divena bhakti yogena yajata purusham param whether one is without desires condition of the soul of the bodies or is desires of all for the result or is of the liberation one should win one should with all efforts try to worship the supreme personality of godhead for complete perfection culminating in krishna consciousness and back to the verse again ಕೃಷ್ಣ <laughs> supreme personality of god from him only everything happens 
You can see here in this verse. Yachapi Sarvabhutanam Bijam Tadaham Arjuna Natarasti Vina Yatshyan Maya Bhutam Characharam Furthermore, Arjuna, I am the generating seed of all existence. There is no being, moving or non-moving, that can exist without me. So you see, this is very important. Sometimes we get illusion thinking that there are other controllers. There is no other controllers. There is only one controller and that's Krishna. You know, that is also confirmed uh, by Lord Brahma. Iswaraha Paramaha Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadi Radi Govinda Sarva Karanam Karanam Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the Supreme Godhead. He has an eternal blissful body, he is the origin of all. That. He has no other origin and is the prime cause of all causes. So this we have to understand that Krishna is everything. You know, there's no anything can be done without Krishna. This is important point. Because when we get conditioned by the three modes of material nature, then this kind of understanding is covered. You know. So when we are in the modes, Pakiti Kiriyamanani, Gunayir Karmani Sarvasha, Hankara Vimudatma, Kartahamiti Manjati. The spirit soul, bewildered by the influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by the three modes of material nature. So if a moment is covered by Maya, then he thinks that he is the doer. He does not know that everything is done by Krishna. Explains here also again. Naham Prakasha Sarvasha Yoga Maya Samamrutaha Mudo Yam Nabijanam Te. You see this verse here. Loka Mam Ajam Avyayam. I am never manifest the foolish and unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my internal potency. And therefore, they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. You see this point. So unless you come to devotional service, you cannot understand these things. You can see here in this verse, Bhaktiya Tva Ananya Sakya Aham Evam Vidur Juna Jantum Dustum Cha Tattvena Pravestam Cha Parantapa My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotion service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So you understand, by devotion only we can come. So there are different degrees of surrendering to Krishna as we are coming on to this point. So actually God is understood in uh, three aspects. Vadanti tattva tattva vidas yat tattvam atvayam brahmeti parmatmaiti bhagavaniti sabdayete So So God is known as Brahman. Learned translation know from the absolute truth called this non dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan. When we say non dual, that means it's not there's two or three, it's only one that is all equal to the same person, Krishna. 
You see this point? So now we are going to explain what happens if we surrender to Brahman, what happens if you surrender to Paramatma, what happens if you surrender to Bhagavan. So when you surrender to Brahman, then think God has got no form. Ultimately, God is impersonal. Then the result is also different. You see, that is explained here in this verse. Those who go to the, those who take this impersonal aspect, someone may say that aside from devotees who always seek shelter at the lotus feet, there are those who are not devotees, but who have accepted different processes of attaining salvation. What happened to them? In answer to this question, Lord Brahma and other demigods said, O lotus eyed Lord, Although non-devotees who accept severe austerities and penance to achieve the highest position may think themselves liberated, their intelligence is pure, they fall down from their position of fall down from their position of imagined superiority because they have no regard for your lotus feet. So anyone who goes to this Brahma Jodi, uh, they <coughs> go to the uh, falls and they hang there, hanging into their light there. And the moment they desire some action, they come back again to the material world. So that means this uh, Brahman realization or Brahman, uh, you know, getting Krishna as the impersonal aspect is not permanent. You see, it is not secured either. Because you cannot stay just in the air. You know, the moment you have like a plane flying in the sky, the moment it comes out of petrol, unless you land in some place, it will be disastrous. Uh, see, so there must be a base. You see, and that to confirm that base, Krishna says in this verse here, that I am the base, Brahmano he patishtaham. See, so that means even the effulgence, it's coming from Krishna. You see? I am the basis. I am the basis of impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal in its constitutional position of ultimate happiness. In other words, if you do not go to Krishna, but you go to this effulgence that's coming from Krishna's body, then, you know, it is not perfection. It is also said in the Brahma Samhita, Yesha Prabha Prabhavato Jagananda Koti Koti Swase Savasudadi Vibhuti Bhinam Tad Brahmanistalamananta Ase Sabhutam Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Oh, I worship Govinda Primeval Lord who's a fulgence. You see this word here, who's a fulgence. Is the source of the non differentiated Brahman mansion in the Upanishad being differentiated from the infinity of glories of the mundane universe appears as individual, infinite, limitless in truth? In other words, this light that is coming from Krishna, see, Yesha Prabha, this Afalgan, his light is giving light to all the universes, planets. You know, this is where, it, in other words, <clears throat> everything is coming from Krishna. So if you surrender to the impersonal aspect, uh, Krishna says that advancement is very troublesome, difficult. For those minds who are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult, those who are embodied. Now we are going to the Paramatma. Somebody who surrendered to Paramatma, what happens? For those who surrender to Paramatma, usually they practice this mystic yoga. Usually it's called Kriya Yoga. So there they try to get mystic powers. So when they get these mystic powers, they go to either the Siddha Loka, uh, you know, <clears throat> but then uh, even going to the planet, as he says, that in the 8th chapter, text 16, 
దెన్ ఈవెన్ యూ గో టు ద టాప్ మోస్ట్ ప్లానర్ ఆ బ్రాహ్మ భువనలోక పునరావర్తి నోర్జున మామూపేతు కాంతయ్య పునర్జన్మ నా విద్యతు ఫ్రమ్ ద హైయెస్ట్ ప్లానర్ ద మెటీరియల్ వరల్డ్ డౌన్ టు ద లోవెస్ట్ ఆల్ ప్లేసెస్ ఆఫ్ మిజరీ వెర్ ఇన్ రిపీటెడ్ బర్త్ అండ్ డెత్ టేక్స్ ప్లేస్ బట్ వన్ హూ అటెండ్స్ మై అబౌట్ ద సన్ ఆఫ్ కుంతి నెవర్ టేక్స్ బర్త్ అగైన్ సో ఇన్ అదర్ వర్డ్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ దిస్ పార్షియల్ రియలైజేషన్ ఆఫ్ పరమాత్మ ఇన్ ద హార్ట్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఆల్సో because it does not bring you to the final conclusion that is to krishna you understand so either you surrender the brahman or you surrender the parmatma it is different result if you surrender to brahman you go to the effulgent if you surrender to the parmatma you try to get some mystic powers uh but if you surrender to krishna god you go back to god krishna and you don't return again Now what happens if someone is surrendered to Karma Yoga? Actually there is very little difference between Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. But some people who are more attached to this Karma. So it is says here that those who are Karma Yogis. Yajyanartha Karma Nayatra లోకయాం కర్మ బాంధన తత్కార్థం కర్మ కౌంతయ్య ముక్త సంఘ సమాచార సో వర్క్ డన్ ఎస్ సాక్రిఫైస్ విష్ణు హెస్ టు బి ఫోమ్ పర్ఫార్మ్ అదర్వైజ్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ డూ దిస్ ఫర్ కృష్ణ విచ్ ఇస్ కాల్ భక్తి యోగ యూ డూ ఫర్ యువర్ సెన్సెస్ దెన్ వాట్ హ్యాపన్ అదర్వైజ్ వర్క్ ఇస్ బాండేజ్ ఇన్ దిస్ మెటీరియల్ వర్ల్డ్ ఇన్ అదర్ వర్డ్స్ you become uh, stuck in the cycle of birth and death therefore son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for your satisfaction in that way you will always remain free from bondage when we say bondage in the material world means again birth again death again birth again death different different species one after the other one after the other you see the point so work sometimes people say work is worship you know they think that is what they should do but that result is different and that you surrender the result to krishna then it's freeing you but most people are attached to the work and they think that whatever they get is theirs so when they become attached to that <clears throat> then again they go to bondage సో హి కర్మణ అధికారాస్తే మా ఫలేషు కదాచన మా కర్మ ఫల హేతు మా తేషాం గత్వ కర్మణి యూ హెవ్ అ రైట్ టు పర్ఫార్మ్ యువర్ ప్రిస్క్రైబ్ డ్యూటీ బట్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ ఎంటైటల్ ద ఫ్రూట్స్ ఆఫ్ యాక్షన్ నెవర్ కన్సిడర్ యువర్ సెల్ ద కాజ్ ఆఫ్ ద రిజల్ట్స్ ద యాక్టివిటీస్ నెవర్ బి అటాచ్ టు నాట్ డూయింగ్ యూర్ డ్యూటీ సో యూ సీ దిస్ పాయింట్ యూ హెవ్ అ రైట్ టు డూ యువర్ వర్క్ బట్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ entitled to the fruits of action that has to be given to krishna it's also said in the chapter 9 text 27 you can see uh, yat karo si yat asnasi yat yuho si dadasi yat yat tapasi si kaunta yat tat kuru swamadarpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer or give away and whatever austerities perform do that osana kunti as an offering to me in other words you cannot do anything uh, for your own sense gratification and if you do that then it activities will be binding in other words you will be again stuck in the material world in the ocean of birth and death so we have to be careful <clears throat> uh what we do work it is not that we can simply work uh, any whole how again i'm going to show you another verse spoken by lord brahma i mean uh, narada muni idam he pumsam tapasya sutasya va shivatasya shuktasya cha budi dattayo avichito artha kavibe nirup nirup nirupito yat uttama shloka gunanu varnanam Lennart Sarkar has positively concluded that the infallible purpose of advancement of knowledge, namely of strategy, study with the Vedas, sacrifice, chanting of hymns, clarity, charity, culminates in the dis- transcendental description of the Lord, who is defined in choice, probability. So everything you do must come to this point. But if you don't do, then your karma will bind you. 
Now, what about Jnan? Somebody like to cultivate, you know, <coughs> what do you call that, intelligence. You see, what happens to that? Suppose I just want to work to get knowledge. Hmm? It is explained in this verse. So here you see in this verse, when you try to cultivate knowledge, Atapi teva padambuja dvaya prasada leshana grihita eva he janati tattvam bhagavan mahimno na chanye eko pichiran vichindran. My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. You see? You see this? But those who speculate uh, to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, they are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. The verse here, it says, you know, Chiran. Chiran, see this word Chiran, very long period. Usually when we wish someone long life, we say Chiranjeev. Huh? Means long, long life. You know? In other words, you just speculate and speculate, you cannot understand. That's not possible. You understand? That will not bring you to the desired goal. You cannot get God, Krishna. What do you get? Huh? This is explained here. This is what we get. See, when we throw it in that way, trying to just speculate, Shreya Shritim Bhakti Mudapa Udashyate Vibhu Kleshyanti Ye Kevala Bodha Labda Ye Tesham Asam Kleshalaha Eva Isishyate Nanyajyata stula tusha vag avagattinam. Translation. My dear Lord, devotional service unto you is the best path for self-realization. If someone gives up that path and engage in the cultivation of speculative knowledge, he will simply undergo a troublesome process and will not achieve his desired result. As a person who beats an empty horse of wheat cannot get grain, one who simply speculates cannot achieve self-realization. His only gain is trouble. See this here? So if you try to do the speculation, thinking and figuring out with your mind, the strength of your mind, then the only result is trouble. See? Why? Because the mind is very defective. To rely on a defective organ, uh, which is full of mistakes, is subject to illusion, and is, you know, has got a cheating propensity, it cannot come to absolute conclusion. Krishna does not reveal to one by the strength of his speculation. It's only by the surrender. So now we have discussed going to Brahman is not permanent, uh, Paramatma, mystic power, also not permanent. Uh, doing work gets us into trouble. We don't surrender the result to Krishna. By studying, uh, speculating, knowledge, jnan, we also get into trouble. Right? So all these activities are simply trouble. Now someone may say that, what about demigods? So let's go to that. Okay, here you can see here what happens if we worship the demigods. You surrender to the demigods. Tami stai tai har to kriyan prapadyante naya devataha tam tam niyama ashtaya prakriti prakritya niyaha taha swaya. Those whose intelligence have been stolen by material desires surrender to the surrender unto the demigods and follow the particular rules and regulation of worship according to their own natures. So that means those who go to the demigods, that means they are very much lusty. They have got many, many desires. What happens to them? They have surrender and follow some rules. 
So Krishna is explaining here, I am in every one side of the super soul. As soon as one desires to worship some demigod, I make his face steady so that he can devote himself to that particular deity. Then what happens? Sataya Sadaya Yukta Stashyar Ardhanam Yate Labte Chatata Kamam Mayeva Vihitan Hetan. This is a very important word. Mayeva Vihitan Hetan. And there is such a fate he, he endeavors to worship a particular demigod and obtains his desires. But in actuality, these benefits are best thought by me alone. So, in other words, the demigods are giving through Krishna. They are not giving it independently from Krishna. You follow? Because, it's explained here, Upadista Anumanta Cha Bhakta Bhakta Maheshwara Paramatma Eti Cha Yukto Deismen Purusha Hasparaha that here in this body there's another a transcendental enjoyer who is the lord the supreme proprietor who exists as the overseer and permitter so krishna is the permitter and is known as the super soul in other words it's not that simply everything is coming by you know the demigods will you know it's coming by the sanction of krishna you follow this point so, the demigods are intermediary. They are not actually... But then what Krishna explained, what happens if you go to them? Antavatu palantesham tada bhakti alpa medasham devan devu yajo yanti mad bhakti yanti mama api. Yeah, it is explained here. The translation. Men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods Go to the planets of the demigods, but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planets. See, there's a difference. If you go to the planet of the demigods, when your piety is finished, then you have to come back again to the material world. When they have first enjoyed vast heavenly sense, pleasure, and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. There's those who seek enjoyment by adhering to the principle of the three Vedas, achieve only repeated birth and death. So again, this is temporary. Worshipping demigod is temporary. Not only is temporary, Krishna is saying further here. Yepi Anya Devata Bhakta Ejante Sadayan Vitaha Tepi Mameva Kantaya Ejante Avidhi Purvakam. Mark this word, Avidhi Purvakam. Which means wrong way. So you can see here, those who are devotees of other gods and worship them with faith, actually worship me only me, Osana Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. You know, so you're not that you can worship any demigods and think that you're worshiping God, the ultimate, no. Because why? Because you worship the demigods, you go to their world. Okay, here. Yanti Deva Vatan Devan, Pitran Yanti Pitran Vataha, Bhutani Yanti Bhute Jaha, Yanti Mat Yajino Pi Mam. What does it mean? Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. So you can see that some philosophers say that uh, and everything is all right. Yatam mat tatam pad. All pa paths leads to the ocean. Uh, so similarly, all rivers go to this. From here, we can understand that if you surrender to Krishna accordingly, your result is also accordingly, as Krishna says. If you surrender to the Brahman, your result is different. You surrender to the uh, Paramatma, the result is different. If you surrender to God, Krishna Himself, the result is different. You surrender to the to your work, that result is different. If you surrender to speculative knowledge, your result is different. 
You surrender to the demigod, your result is different. You surrender to the ghost, your result is different. You surrender to the forefather, your result is different. So everything is different. Until and unless you surrender to Krishna only. You see the word? Those who worship me, uh, they will live with me. So it is not that it's free for all. You know? Anything you do and everything you do, you get to some kind of a conclusion. Uh, this is a fool's philosophy. It's not supported even by Krishna, God himself. You know, we cannot whimsically try to do anything. Now suppose I surrender to my mind. Let's say if I go in that way, then what happens? When we surrender to our mind, you say here, the mind it is, uh, can be our best friend and can be our worst enemy. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best friend. But one who has failed to sow, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. And what is the greatest enemy? Uh, the mind will bring us to here, you can see. If I do not take care of controlling my mind, yam yam vapi smaranam bhavan teja ante kalevaram tam tam eviti kauntaya sadatat bhava bhavita. In other words, whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state you will attain without fail. In other words, if I am thinking of something other than God, then I will attain that respective body, either cat, dog or whatever. So therefore, just listening to our mind is also dangerous. Huh? Right? So now what to do? So let's say I, I want to surrender to austerity. Everybody is very fond of doing austerity whimsically. Let's go to that. 17. Some people think like that. You know, I can do some austerity and that will give me good results. Those who undergo severe austerities and penance not recommended in the scriptures, performing them out of pride and egoism, or impelled by lust and attachment or foolish who torture the material elements of the body as well as the super soul dwelling within are known to be demons. In other words, you just simply do austerity is not authorized by Krishna and that also makes you a demon. You're not going to get perfection either. You follow? And then what about some people think that, no, I will do some jihad, jihad thing, you know, I will go and kill some people or, you know, that way I fight for God and then I'll go back. And what happened to them? Let's explain here again. Penance performed out of foolishness, with self-torture, or to destroy or injure others, is said to be in the mode of ignorance. To anyone who is in the modes, they cannot go back to the spiritual world. If anyone wants to go back to the spiritual world, then they must surrender to Krishna. Why? Because Krishna is above the moods. Unless we take shelter of Krishna, there's no possibility of going back to the spiritual world. Arihe nirguna sakshat purusha pakite he para tasarva dragupa drishta tambaja nirguna bhavet. Our Lord Hari, however, has no connection with the material moods. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the all seeing eternal witness, who is transcendental to material nature. One who worships him becomes similarly free from the material modes. So, uh, this is very important. We cannot try to think that we can do anything and everything you like and then get some kind of a utopian result. That's not a very practical, you know, and logical, what we say, uh, assumption. You can see here, Unless and until we surrender to Krishna. Devi Esha Gunamai, Mama Maya Trutyaya, Mam Eva E Prapadyante. This is very important here. Yes, now we started the slokas. Ye Yata Mam Prapadyante. Now here, Mam Eva E Prapadyante. Unless we surrender to Krishna, there's no question of going out of this material world. This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of mental nature is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily, see the word here, 
can easily cross beyond it. That means this material world is like a prison. You can try to do every other thing. It will not give you any, what we say, liberation. You cannot come out of it. You may be superficially happy with some material pleasures. Uh, actually, if you surrender to that, sex, let's say we go to that sex, everybody is interested in sex life. Uh, what happens if we go to the sex life? Let us see what happens. This is the highest thing in the material world, the highest pleasure. Someone say, no, I will just surrender to sex life. Yan Maituna di Grahame di Sukame to Cham, Kandune na Garoyo he Dukka Dukam. You see the word here? Dukka Dukam. Tripayanti neha Kripani, Bahu Dukka Baja. Bahu means so much of miseries. Kandu Twena, Manishi Jam, Vishihe to Dira. The translation. Sex life is compared to rubbing of two hands to relieve an each. Grahamedis, so-called grahastas, who have no spiritual knowledge, think that this itching is the greatest platform of happiness. Although actually it is a source of distress. The kripanas, the fools, who are just opposite the brahmanas, are not satisfied by repeated sensual enjoyment. Those who are dira, however, who are sober and who tolerate this itching, are not subject to the sufferings of fools and rascals. You understand? So in other words, this sex life, uh, you see here, the sex life is the source of, of distress, see? So in other words, it is also not the solution. If we surrender to that, thinking that sex life is all in all, then the end result is going to be very disastrous. You know, it's explained here in chapter 16, text 16 of the Gita, that anyone who thinks that this is very good, then you can see, just perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusion, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. So sex life is also bad. Huh? So what else to surrender now? Tell me. Huh? Everything you surrender other than Krishna is going to be disastrous. There's no other choice but to surrender to Krishna. If we do not want to do it, then we have to carry on. Millions and millions of lives, we have to take different, different bodies and try to enjoy in different, different situations. Uh, this is explained here. The living entity. Thus, taking another gross body enjoys a certain type of ear, eyes, tongue, nose, and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. It thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. The foolish cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body, nor can they understand what sort of body enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. But one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this. You see this point? Suppose I don't care for all this nonsense, to this Hare Krishna nonsense and Krishna nonsense. I don't want to surrender to this rubbish. You know? What happens? Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, I perpetually curse them into the ocean of material existence, into various demonic species of life. So if we don't surrender to Krishna and we don't care, we do whatever I like and whatever I like, then next life is going to be very, very bad. Let Krishna reward you by giving you a, a, a birth of a, a fish, a monkey, a dog, a cat, or a snake, or a tree. There are 8.4 million species. Anything you can get, as you don't surrender. So this surrendering thing is very broad. I think we have covered so many angles of this today. Right? So, 
if anyone wants to be a bit mischievous, as it says here, then the result will be very disastrous. Because once you go to the lower species, it will take millions and millions of years uh, to come back to the human form. That's why it says, you know, Akama Sarva Kama Va Moksha Kama Udharadi Trivena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham Param A person who has a broader intelligence, that means someone who has got some brains, whether he be full of all material desires, without any material desire, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole the personality of Godhead. You understand this point? So if you want to become serious, then there's no other way out of this. There's only one way, uh, to take shelter of Krishna, surrender to Him wholeheartedly, and stop this business of going different, different bodies, going on in the cycle of repeated birth and death. There is no solution. Tasma dekena manasa bhagavan sattvatam patihi srotavya kirtavya ascha dhyaya pujyascha nityada Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember and worship the personality of God who is the protector of the devotees. There's no other way out of this. There's no other way. And there will not be another way. So, okay, it's already nine o'clock. Anybody has any questions on the subject? Anybody has any questions? You can unmute yourself and ask online and I'll be ready to answer the question. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, um, so you, you talked about listening to the mind. Yes. Uh, right, sir. We should not listen to the mind. We should eat it with chappals. But, yes. Uh, uh, right. Uh, but sometimes even turning to Krishna consciousness, like let us say I'm faced with uh, uh, with a uh, with a situation or a choice, uh, right, or an option. I choose something. Right. Uh, do I choose to live in one city versus another city? Do I take up a particular job or do I uh, spend time somewhere else? Uh, uh, do I go on parikrama or something else? Am I listening to the mind? I mean... Spiritual life I mean, means uh, to take instruction from spiritual masters. Uh, well, what you do, whatever you do, all these things, you should try to first get direction from Guru. So when the spiritual master tells you what to do, then you are safe. But when you try to listen to your mind, then you will get into some problems. That's okay. why uh, Arjuna was so advice, you know, to take shelter of the spiritual master. See what happens in chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita. I'll show you the verse. Give me a minute. You can see here in this verse, I am now confused about my duty and I have lost all composure. Because of miserly weakness in this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. I am now your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. See? The same thing happened with Vyasadeva when he was confused and very feeling despondent after writing all the Vedas and the, all the Puranas. So he was very, uh, you know, not feeling good. So then his spiritual master came, you know, and he inquired, what is the best thing I should do? See? 
So immediately Narada Muni gave him direction. You have failed to describe the glories of the Lord. Therefore you have, uh, you know, done some great injustice. See? Same thing when Arjuna was attacked by Aswatthama. Uh, he asked Krishna, who was sitting on the chariot, what should I do? So then you may ask this question, but how, how I, I have no spiritual master, then what should I do? So therefore you must have a spiritual master. You may not have surrendered immediately, but the best is as we have advised, that you take shelter of Prabhupada. And Prabhupada is there to help you. you all you have to do is ask him, or you read these books, somewhere the answers will come. What should I do? That sincerity must be there in the heart. And that way, spiritual master will be very keen to enlighten the disciple on the right path. This is spiritual life. In any every end, endeavor, you know, we should try to do that. Then our thing is very secure, as is stated by Krishna himself to Arjuna in this verse. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. However, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost in this point. Uh, so therefore, you can see later on Arjuna replies to him. Arjuna says, Nasta moham smriti labdhva tva prashara maya chuta shito smin gatha sandeha karishe vachanam tava. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, one infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and I am prepared to act according to your instructions. So, this is the basis of spiritual life. This is exemplified by the character in Arjuna, as in Krishna as the spiritual master. So anyone who follows this system, then he will definitely become successful, because then he will not be touched by Maya. Because if he listens to spiritual master, that means he's taking instruction from Krishna through the spiritual master. So when the spiritual master is bona fide, and his instruction will also be bona fide. And in that way, then your result will also be there. But when we do not take shelter of the spiritual master, then we try to act according to our mental perception, then the result will become disastrous. So this is the important point. So it may not be immediately the answer may come, but we have to be patient. And then slowly Krishna will reveal everything to us. Does that answer the question? Hello. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Any other questions? All right. You have no more questions. Uh, uh, Prabhu, uh, I, I thought if somebody, uh, nobody else has a question, I have one more question. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes. Uh, uh, Prabhu, uh, in chapter 15, I remember there was a reference to lawyer class of people. How are who, is they measured? Who, who is this asking the question? I am Madhavan from Chennai. Oh, Madhavan from Chennai. Yeah. Uh, uh, Prabhu, the yes. lawyer class of people reported in chapter 15 ah. just now. Yes. How are they measured, Prabhu? Is it by quality of behavior or monetary meanness or any other factor, Prabhu? Chapter 15, what verse was that? Can you give me some uh, more feedback? So I can take it out. No, actually, we can go. Huh? Yes, just now you, there was a reference about the lower class of people. Or oh, those people who are mischievous. Yeah, and also lower class. It was referred as lower class. Oh. So that is according to the uh, status, you know. Ah, the, that's not clear. Is it by quality of behavior or monetary meanness or how? No, I mean, no, the they are, according, to, according to the quality of their association with the modes of mental nature. If ah, they associate okay. with the lower mode, then they become lower. Mm -hmm. Understand? 
So accordingly, you go. If you take the lower modes, then you take birth accordingly. That again, for the explain in this verse. Hmm. How do we get emancipated from this, uh, quality of being classified as a lower class? I can see here. When one dies in the mode of passion, it takes a monk dose in fruitive activities. When one dies in the lower mode of ignorance, it takes birth in the animal kingdom. So the result is different. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But if you take shelter of Krishna, then you go back to the spiritual world. There's no other way. You follow? You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you want to stay in the lower modes by doing all kind of, uh, you know, breaking the principle, eating meat, having illicit sex, gambling, intoxication, behaving like an animal, then next life will be animal. Simple logic. Mm, ah, that's why he says mm. you have to transcend the modes. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Prabhu. It clarifies my doubt. Yes. Thank you, thank you. One who engages in full devotion to the is unfailing in all circumstances and one transcends the modes, material nature. This comes to the level of Brahman. In other words, unless you become a devotee mm -hmm. in Chan, you won't go above the modes. That's why mm -hmm. chanting Hare Krishna is very important. Mm. Those who don't want to chant, then there's no question. They want to do what they want to do. They get their own results. It's not that mm. Krishna is unkind. It's according to your desire, you know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, sir. Right. Any other questions? Prabhu, is it necessary for us to, to be awake tonight like Ekadasi? Well, we don't practice that because our devotees are all are constantly preaching. So we just take some rest and go out and preach, you know. Preaching is the most important thing. That's okay, the standard man. Prabhupada has given us. He never train us to stay all night and, you know, and then sleep all next day, all day, you know. What's the point? Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. People who got nothing else to do, they probably can do that. Okay, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much. And, uh, I think I know quite a few people that way. <laughs> Sorry, anything else? Huh? There's no question from the Singapore end. All right then. Thank you very much for having me with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very very much. Very nice you have uh, attended this nice class from Prabhupada. You know, so many uh, where we say realizations. We should now take it a little seriously. That's why one last verse before I go. Krishna says, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. So, this is the conclusion. Why not just take shelter of Krishna, chant Hare Krishna, and go back home to the spiritual world? I don't think that's very difficult to do. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna to all of you. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you. All glories to Prabhupada. Bandeham.